This old coffee tastes mighty good. That's not the reason why I've got to get back up to that sugar shack. Hey, everybody. Jim Tedesco here. Millennium County Railroad version 2.0. Uh, I'm just going to give you a quick update of what I've been doing here the last few days. I'm putting my new printer to the test, that's for sure. And I'll show you what I've been doing. So hang on a minute, I'll readjust the camera and we'll get right on it. Okay, here we are, we're recording. So as you can see, I've been doing a lot of backgrounds. And a lot of backgrounds. I hope you're not getting too dizzy here. I'm trying to keep it as steady as possible. And that's where we've ended so far. Right there. I still got to go around the wall. And back around here. And then we, I ended up here already. I tore down the old one. I didn't like it so... We went ahead and put up all new, well, we, I, put up all new backgrounds. Now, mind you, this is a lot of papers I printed. What, about like 40 sheets? Maybe more. I didn't actually count them, but there's a lot. And right to the end there. Plus, underneath, I did all that. I still got a couple more sheets to put in yet over there. And I've got some more down there I've got to put in. But we'll be getting, I'll be getting on it soon. Also, I went ahead and I put the, uh, the water in. I don't know if you can actually see that or not. Probably not. But I've got to use the uh, Mod Podge in there to give it the waves. So I'll be doing that tomorrow more than likely. So I'm out of doing uh, Pogo River. I didn't have enough to do that that lake over there, Lake Joe, so I'll have to get another box for that. And I also did Doodle Lake, the nudist part. So I went ahead and I've got to clean it up yet, but I went ahead and grassed it. And of course I used my uh, high voltage grass thingy there. <laughs> I forgot what it's called. So anyway, I got that in there. And we've got some grass standing up. And I've got to go ahead and clean that up tomorrow after it dries up real good. And get all the figures in there and I'll shoot another, uh, I'll shoot an update on that when the time comes. So that's pretty much what I've been doing. Uh, oh yeah, here, let me show you something. i got to put power on there first. Power, power up everything. Now we got some lighting and stuff. Now what I did was, as a matter of fact, I got all kinds of stuff in my way over here. <laughs> of course. So what happens when you're doing work, it gets sloppy. Now, I went ahead and I put my uh, two turnouts in. And I have the control switches right here. And this one here, which I've got my finger on, as you've seen, will control this one. And it works pretty good. And over here, and the other one. Now, they're not quite as slow as Tom Kovichak's, but... I didn't, and my, my system's not quite as complex as his. I kept mine simple. And for lots of different reasons, but uh, I'm going to maintain the simpleness. I was going to slow them down, but I thought, you know, it's really not that big of a deal. And I really couldn't figure out how, to be honest, I couldn't figure out how to code it in to change the speed without going crazy. I'm not using relays, and you can't see any electronics that's underneath here in the drawer. And this is basically it's an Uno board and the, and the servo, and I've got a Uno board for each servo. Now, I'll be doing things a little differently with the servos next time, or what said with the board, 
I can't remember the name of the board, Tom would know, but you can, I think, run up to 16 servos on it. And since I have got a lot of turnouts over here, I'll be using that system to control all these, uh, all these turnouts. I've got one, two, uh, two, three, four, five. I've got six turnouts right here in this general area. And I don't want to be running <laughs> six Unos. That'd be crazy. So I'm going to go ahead and use that thing. And then I'll probably use a separate Uno over there in the corner. And I can use an Uno for the two uh, turnouts over here. And well, I'll probably use nanos for this actually. And I'll use a nano for this one over here, which is somewhat covered up at the moment. And like I said, I've been busy printing. Uh, fortunately, I have a lot of uh, glossy paper that I've been stockpiling for years. And I don't know if you can see this, and I'm going to get my flashlight out. This new printer, I can't, I can't help but brag about it. I don't know if you can see that or not. Yeah, you can almost see the uh, the levels there. They're not down that much. And that's for printing all that stuff. And that's the original ink that the printer came with. Now, I did buy an ink pack on Amazon for $19. All four colors, 65 milliliter bottles. Actually, 70 milliliter bottles. I bought them just in case, but it don't look like I'll be using them anytime soon by the looks of it. So some of you just wrote in and said, yeah, the printer's kind of pricey. But in the long run, it really isn't, because if you can print all this stuff, like I said, I haven't even dented the ink yet. Now my old printer, the old Epson, I would have gone through one, I would have gone through four tanks to do what, four cartridges of all three colors to do this. And four cartridges is around $40. So you're looking at $160 worth of ink. Well, you damn near paid for the printer with that. Now here I've got the ink that came with the printer for $200. i am still running with it. and According to the specs, you can go ahead and print $4,500. That's 4000 500 sheets of paper with each color tank. That's a lot of pages. And 7,000 on the black. So anybody who thinks that that printer is too expensive isn't thinking right. <laughs> so trust me, if you're going to be doing any kind of printing on your layout, or, and of course it's good for other things too, it's not just for your layout, but I mean a lot of guys are printing their own backgrounds because backgrounds for the layout are very expensive. And my reason to do, actually, these pictures you're seeing here is, let me grab one. My wife just took this picture up in Plant City when we went to the uh, train show. And I just reverse every other one, which is easy to do with the editing program. So I'll print like five of these at a time, reverse it, print five of those. And the reversed ones look uh, similar. So this way there's, it molds together better. So complicated to do this. They see if you put them together, and then the other way. And they join up much better, so it looks, it doesn't look as bad as it, as it would if you were doing like, like the first ones I did. I didn't like the way it came out, so I tore them all off. And I wasted a lot of ink on that too, by the way. But that was with the old printer, this new printer. Man, I love it. It's just great. And I doubt if I use all the ink in that cartridge in the next year or so. Fortunately, the ink you buy is guaranteed for two years, so it won't dry up or anything. That's for the ink. That's not bad. So, yeah, my wife likes to print a lot of things sometimes. Even though she has her own printer, I gave her the old Epson, actually. And a plus, I got a laser in the house that I use primarily. Is there any color pictures you want to do? Just come out here and do it on this because it doesn't cost anything. So, sounds like I'm really bragging trying to sell this. Yeah, I am. <laughs> I mean, I'm just looking out for everybody's wallets, you know, because I know money's tight. 
So it's important to, uh, to save money where you can. Uh, let's see what else is going on. Uh, like I said, I poured the river. Now I gotta buy another box of that stuff, and I probably have to wait till next month because that's twenty bucks a box. Um, because I got just a tiny little bit left in the, in the original containers, and that's not gonna be enough to do Lake Joe. So I just have to deal with it unless I narrow that lake out, but I don't really want to do that. Yeah, I've got this mod box here. I bought this about a year or so ago. Still, it's still sealed in the container. <laughs> and this is the uh, the mat. This will be perfect for that. So I've got the seal on it. You don't use much of this anyway. You just take and brush it. And then you take the airbrush, don't put nothing in it, you just run the air to, to give that wavy effect. And it works beautifully. I actually did it down in Naples in my old layout. And I was really uh, pleased with the way it came out. So I'll be doing the same thing on this. Of course, I'll only be doing the two rivers. Due to lake, it's a lake and the lake should be smooth. So, you know, we're not going to do it with that. And of course, I'll have the nude set up on that lake. we got to get some brush up and trees and shrubs and all kinds of stuff so they can hide a little bit. Uh, but that'll come out pretty nice. So we're moving right along. <laughs> and that's the way I like to do things, right? So I've got a lot more like electrical work to do yet. Like I said, the other ones, I'm not in a big hurry to do them. Uh, but I'll get to it soon. Let's see, is there anything else going on? Not nah, really. Uh, you saw the uh, the tsunami sound car that came out nice. Yeah, that's about it for the moment. So, like I said, just to be a quick update, and it's about as quick as I can get it. So, with that, as always, keep it on the rails. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you again real soon. See ya.